Everyone thought he was just another hopeless weeb, doomed to spend his days arguing about anime on Twitter. But somehow, this guy, armed with nothing but rusty Russian language skills and a knack for chaos, managed to charm Alia, the girl every guy in school thought was out of their league. Alia wasn't just your typical pretty face, she was the full package. Half Russian, an academic genius, an athletic powerhouse, and to top it all off, the newly minted treasurer of the student council. Wherever she walked, students practically parted like the Red Sea. But on her first day, a senior named Ando decided to test his luck. He strutted up to her with all the swagger of someone who thinks they're irresistible and asked her out again, she demanded, glaring. Kuze, rubbing his eyes, called anime the art form of the gods and launched into a bizarre rant about his latest Twitter fight over whether lolis are legal. Seriously, Kuze? Alia, unimpressed, muttered something in Russian that made her. Realizing what she'd said, Kuze quietly smiled to himself, deciding not to call her out. Yet. After class, Kuze pulled out his phone like it was a life-or-death emergency. Alia raised an eyebrow, reminding him that phones weren't allowed, but he brushed her off, claiming this was important. He had a chance to win a rare he just won the lottery. The moon goddess he exclaimed staring lovingly at his screen. Alia grabbed the phone to see what all the fuss was about. What she found was a silver-haired anime waifu. She rolled her eyes and handed it back. Even I have silver hair, she muttered in Russian, feeling a strange pang of annoyance. When Kuze asked her what she said, she deflected, calling him a try-hard gamer. Kuze, in classic nerd fashion, proudly declared that he only played free-to-play characters, unlike those pay-to-win sweats. You're going to die alone if you keep living like this, Alia said with a smirk, walking off. Kuze followed her, claiming that her roast wasn't fair, but she just ignored him. Later during lunch, Kuze sat at his usual table and to die alone. Kyo, ever the realist, told him to keep dreaming. Just then, Alia and her friends walked into the cafeteria. The room seemed to hold Alia and her sisters were, while Maru whispered about rumors he'd heard, including that Alia's sister was secretly dating someone. Suddenly, Suo, one of Alia's friends, locked eyes with Kuze and smiled. Maru's jaw hit the table. The gods have smiled upon you, my friend. He whispered as he and Kyo scrambled to leave, abandoning Kuze with Suo, and to his surprise, Alia, who had also sat down across from him, looking grumpier than usual. Suo, cheerful as ever, started chatting with Kuze about their shared love of spicy ramen. Meanwhile, Alia stared down at her omelette, stabbing it aggressively with her fork, she teased, pointing out the streak of mud on her socks. Apparently, a truck had splashed her on the way to school, she sighed, pulling out a clean pair from her bag. Kuze couldn't help but stare, which Alia noticed immediately. With a mischievous grin, she handed him the socks and said, if you're going to stare, you might as well make yourself useful. Put these on for me. What? Kuze practically choked on his own shock. You heard me. Consider it a treat, she said, smirking. Blushing furiously, Kuze knelt down and started sliding the sock onto her foot, his hands trembling. Kuze spent the rest of the day nursing his pride and the faint outline of a shoe print on his face. By lunchtime, he was back at the cafeteria with Maru and Kyo, who were still buzzing about Suo and Alia sitting with him earlier. Man, you've got it all, Maru said, shaking his head in disbelief. If Alia talked to me like she talks to you, I'd let her insult me for hours. That's because you're a degenerate, Kyo replied. Before Maru could argue, Alia and Suo entered the cafeteria again. Suo spotted Kuze and waved, making her way over with Alia reluctantly trailing behind. This time, Suo didn't even ask, she plopped down right next to Kuze with a bright smile. Alia, still looking grumpy, sat across from them, and poked at her food. So I'd rather spend my time not being a responsible adult. Oh, come on! Suo pressed. You were the vice president back in middle school, right? You'd be great. Alia's eyes widened slightly. You were vice president? She asked, surprised. Only because they forced me? Kuze grumbled. The president back then said I was good at getting things done, whatever that means. Suo grinned. See? You'd be perfect. Plus we'd get to work together again. Alia suddenly downed half her cola in one go, muttering something in Russian about ugly witches under her breath. Kuze, of course, understood every word but wisely kept quiet. After and hurried off. 
That night, Kuze had another dream about the Russian girl from his childhood, the one who had taught him how to speak her language. He woke up with a start, his mind racing. Could it be? No, that was crazy. There was no way Alia could be the same girl. The next morning, Alia arrived at school to find Kuze already at his desk, looking uncharacteristically awake and alert. She tried to ignore him, but throughout the day, she couldn't help but steal glances. Why did he seem... different? And why was he glowing like he just discovered the meaning of life? She shook her head, blaming it on lack of sleep. During gym class the girls' volleyball team faced off against the boys' team in a friendly match. Alia was in her element, spiking the ball with precision and grace. Kuze, on the other hand, was busy getting hit in the face by a stray ball on the sidelines. While he staggered off to recover, Alia followed him. A mix of concern and amusement on her face. Are you okay? She asked, inspecting the bump on his forehead. I'm fine, he mumbled, rubbing his head. I've had worse. Like what, getting kicked in the face? She teased, a small smirk playing on her lips. Exactly, Kuze replied, trying to act cool, but failing miserably. Alia leaned in closer brushing a strand of hair out of his eyes. Kuze's heart skipped a beat. For a moment, he thought she might actually care. Later that day, as the bell rang, Kuze eagerly invited Alia to head to the council room together. Without a word, she walked ahead, her attitude seeming annoyed, though Kuze knew it was her sundary nature. On their way, they saw some athletes hurriedly leaving the council room, apologizing nervously to someone inside. Curious, Kuze entered and met Chisaki, a purple-haired tomboy wielding a bamboo stick, who introduced herself as the council secretary and the president's girlfriend. After a brief explanation of the athlete's argument, which Chisaki resolved using her unique methods, the meeting began. Kuze introduced himself as the new head of general affairs, partnering with Alia for her presidential campaign. The president wished him luck and reminded him of his junior school experience, assigning him to work with Masha for now due to staff shortages. Before the meeting continued, Yuki asked Alia to help with festival finances and they left together. In a private room, Yuki confessed her love for Kuze, even more than her parents, and pressed Alia to reveal her feelings. Alia hesitated but eventually admitted she wasn't sure if she loved him, though she wouldn't let Yuki have him either. Yuki smirked and ended the conversation, leaving Alia stunned. Back in the council room, Kuze worked with Masha, impressed by her efficiency. During a break, Masha prepared black tea and explained her family's tradition of drinking it year-round. Kuze, reminded of his childhood crush, claimed he knew little about Russians despite secretly studying their culture. Sharing tea and jam, Kuze found the sweetness overwhelming. While Masha remained cheerful, soon, Yuki and Alia returned, and the meeting resumed. Alia seemed grumpy but sat close enough to Kuze that their arms nearly touched. Her sharp tone made Kuze suspect Yuki had caused trouble again. Masha, ever curious, asked Alia if she wanted to marry anyone. Alia denied it but muttered in Russian that it was too early, a comment Kuze overheard but ignored. Soon, the president dismissed everyone, and Kuze walked home with Alia. Sensing her tension, Kuze invited Alia to a cafe to discuss their campaign. Alia whispered something in Russian about it being a date, making Kuze blush. At the cafe, Alia ordered oversized smoothies, clearly for social media. Kuze asked if something had happened with Yuki, but Alia brushed it off, though her annoyance was obvious. When Alia asked if Kuze was dating Yuki, he denied it joking he'd rather date his mom. He assured her Yuki was teasing and shifted back to their campaign. Kuze explained that most candidates dropped out after the initial chaotic debate, leaving three final contenders. This time, everyone assumed Yuki would win, so no one else was running. Alia listened but was distracted by how casual Kuze was around her. To test him, she offered a bite of her dessert. When he hesitated, she insisted Sharon was normal in Russia, forcing him to take the bite smirking, she enjoyed the moment, before returning to their campaign strategy. Kuze suggested Alia make a heartfelt speech to inspire the students. He shared how last year's president, Ken, transformed himself and won over the voters. Alia agreed and ordered food. When Kuze offered her a spicy dish, she struggled with the heat while Kuze tried not to laugh. Walking home, Alia asked about Yuki's potential partner. Kuze mentioned Tan, a strong rival who nearly won the previous election. Alia seemed intrigued, and they parted for the night. 
The next day in the council room, Yuki announced her partner, Ayano, Kuze's sister. Kuze froze as Ayano shot him a knowing look. The following morning, Ayano confronted Kuze, questioning his commitment to running against Yuki. When Kuze confirmed, she reminded him of their grandfather's strict stance on family loyalty, leaving Kuze to wonder what her next move would be. Kuze clenched his jaw at the thought of his grandfather's lectures about family first. He firmly stated that while Yuki was important, this election was about helping Alia. When Ayano asked if he had a message for their grandfather, Kuze snapped that the old man should confront him directly. Frustrated, he headed to class, where his friends were debating idle pictures in a magazine. Trying to keep his cool, Kuze dismissed their antics but reluctantly pointed out a girl with brown hair. His friends teased that she looked like Masha, prompting Kuze to deny any interest and remind them that Masha already had a boyfriend. Alia entered the room, spotted the magazine, and called Kuze an animal in Russian, questioning why a council member would have such a thing. Kuze quickly blamed his clueless friend Taki. As tensions rose, Taki joked about Kuze dating Yuki. Kuze sarcastically replied he wasn't into Alabama-style relationships and wanted a best friend as a partner. Alia softly murmured in Russian that she could be his best friend, making Kuze blush. When Taki made a shallow remark about Alia's looks, she scolded him, grabbed the magazine, and stormed off. Later, the student council gathered, and the girls played a gambling game with Kit Kats, a tradition in Alia's Russian household. Yuki dominated, exploiting Alia's transparency. Observing from another table, Kuzi and the others noted Yuki's sharp strategy. Ken remarked on Alia's lack of composure, while Chisaki pointed out Masha's contrasting angelic demeanor. The conversation shifted to Ayano's relationship with Yuki, where Ayano explained her role as a servant, inspired by her grandparents. She almost revealed her sibling connection to Kuze and Yuki, but Kuze quickly diverted the topic. Masha approached and joined Kuze, mentioning that Alia had sent her away to focus on the game. Glancing over, Alia appeared stressed despite her deep concentration. As the juice ran out, Kuze and Masha volunteered to get drinks. To everyone's surprise, Kuze remembered all the orders perfectly without writing them down. Outside, Masha thanked Kuze for supporting Alia, explaining how rare it was for Alia to accept help. Kuze brushed it off, but Masha insisted it was significant. Kuze admired Yuki's carefree, nerdy side at home, contrasting it with her composed persona at school. Masha then asked why Kuze pretended to be lazy despite being responsible. Kuze explained that by acting lazy, he avoided disappointing others. Masha smiled and reassured him he was doing well, which comforted him, though he felt like a pet. The next morning, Alia was confronted by Tan, Yuki's old rival, in the hallway. Tan accused her of pulling Yuki's partner Kuze to her side, suggesting Alia feared she couldn't win without him. Alia tried to explain, but Tan pushed further, claiming Kuze must have been forced to join her team. Just as things escalated, Kuze arrived and defended Alia, demanding an apology from Tan. Instead, Tan challenged Kuze to a debate, declaring he didn't belong in the student council. Alia stepped in, ready to face Tan herself. Tan dismissed her, calling her a puppet with no skills, and insisted removing eye candy like Kuze would benefit the school. The next day, Kuze and Alia reported the incident to the council president, who saw Tan as a formidable opponent. Kuze pointed out that Tan wasn't even running for president, but Alia saw the debate as an opportunity to gain support. Kuze helped her prepare by simulating Tan's arguments and testing her responses. Before the debate, Alia asked Kuze if Tan disliked him. Kuze explained that while Tan respected him, she probably thought he was creating chaos in the election by supporting Alia instead of Yuki. On the way to the debate, they were approached by Mia, a Gen Z girl and Tan's friend. Mia casually advised them to relax, which annoyed Alia. But Kuze explained Mia's influence among students. Inside the auditorium, Alia grew nervous, feeling judged by the crowd. Kuze reassured her that her real opponent wasn't Tan, but the ideal version of herself she wanted to be. With a joke about Netflix and chilling, he lightened the mood. The debate began with Ken introducing both sides. Tan immediately bypassed Alia and targeted Kuze criticizing the student council system for promoting corruption and favoritism. Tan argued that council members should be chosen based on academic performance and extracurricular achievements, 
ensuring only the most deserving students held positions. Her speech was met with applause. Alia responded confidently, emphasizing student self-governance and maturity, arguing that grades weren't the only measure of worth. She stressed that someone average in studies could excel in social skills and problem-solving, qualities essential for the council. Her points resonated, and Kuzi felt reassured. Tan tried to regain control with sharp questions, but Alia calmly addressed them, leaving Tan flustered. Tan then raised a hypothetical about the abuse of power, but some students began heckling Alia, making her confidence falter. Kuze realized Mia had planted disruptors in the crowd. As Alia struggled, Kuze stepped in with a comedic roast of the current president, pointing out that if grades were the only factor, Ken wouldn't have become president. The crowd laughed, and Tan stormed off, defeated. Alia found Tan crying and learned that she had always admired Yuki and felt inadequate seeing Kuze support Alia. Alia empathized and suggested Tan talk to a counselor. After the debate, Alia was declared the winner. She shared Tan's confession with Kuze, who remarked on Tan's competitive spirit. Alia vowed to earn her respect. Curious, Alia asked why Kuze chose to support her over Yuki. Kuze, looking sad, recalled distancing himself from Yuki and wanting to make up for it by supporting Alia. He told her he genuinely believed she would make an excellent president. Alia smiled and playfully asked why he agreed to partner with her, speaking in Russian. She walked off, telling him to learn Russian if he wanted to know. Kuze hurried after her, trying to decipher her words. As night fell over a luxurious mansion, Yuki's grandfather discussed the recent conference where Kuze had debated against Taniyama Industries. He reflected on Taniyama's past rivalry with Yuki in elementary school, and was disappointed by her withdrawal mid-debate. Yuki assured him she had her reasons, which validated Kuze's campaign. Her grandfather reminded her that losing to Kuze, who had abandoned his abilities despite his talents, was, was unthinkable. Yuki's mother later asked if she was still close to Kuze. Relieved by her answer, she reassured Yuki not to worry. In her room, Yuki sought comfort from Ayano, hugging her until she felt better. The next day, boys at school praised Kuze for his conference performance. Alia, distant as ever, drew curious glances but no one approached her. When Kuze noticed her discomfort, he initiated a conversation, surprising her with his praise for her debate skills. However, when some students insulted Taniyama for leaving the debate, Alia walked out upset. Kuze followed her to the student council room, where she defended Taniyama. He reassured her, emphasizing their fair competition. Though Alia felt their victory was hollow, Kuze reminded her the goal was to help Taniyama recover, not just win. Their conversation was interrupted by Kenzaki and his girlfriend hiding under a desk. Kuze, acting unfazed, made them promise to keep the incident secret. Later, Alia expressed concern about causing trouble, but Kuze reassured her he would support her no matter what, which deeply touched her. Meanwhile, in another classroom, Nono discussed fashion with friends. She teased Kuze about gossip involving Taniyama, but later agreed to help him address the rumors. Nono admitted her loyalty to Taniyama and joked about being drawn to radiant partners like Taniyama and Alia. Kuze suggested spreading a rumor to explain Taniyama's sudden exit, but Yuki and Ayano overheard, accusing him of siding with their opponent. Alia, arriving just in time, grew upset seeing Kuze with Yuki. She feigned indifference, but left muttering in Russian. Yuki teased Kuze about the awkward situation. In a flashback, Taniyama confronted Nono for her reckless behavior, showing her genuine care. Back in class, Kuze invited Alia to study with him. Though hesitant, she joined him in the student council room. Yuki and Ayano soon joined, turning the session chaotic. Alia muttered in Russian about wanting to be alone with Kuze, flustering him. During the session, Alia noticed Kuze's unique study methods, while Yuki and Ayano explained his habits. Their banter shifted when Maria entered with a book on hypnosis. Kuze reluctantly tried hypnotizing Maria and surprisingly succeeded, putting her and later Alia into a trance. The hypnosis session spiraled into chaos when Maria and Alia began acting flirtatiously. Before things went too far, Kenzaki entered, slapped everyone awake, and scolded Kuze. Exhausted, Kuze returned home, eager to study. However, the latest episode of Brain Hazard tempted him. He tried to focus but couldn't resist. Just then, Alia called, teasing him. He asked if she missed hearing his voice, and she replied in Russian, 
playfully asking what was wrong with that. Kuze joked about collapsing when Alia asked how his studying was going. Struggling to focus, he asked her for advice. Alia proposed a bet. If he placed in the top 30, she'd do anything he wanted. Otherwise, she'd get her own request. Kuze hastily agreed, realizing too late it might not be wise. Alia teased him in Russian, hinting at her plans, but Kuze pretended not to understand. She called him, Big Brother, sarcastically, and he countered by pointing out he was technically older. Noticing her mood dim, Kuze awkwardly ended the call, reflecting that Alia must have sensed his struggle. In truth, she had called because she was scared after a horror movie, but didn't want to admit it. What hurt more, was learning his birthday had passed unnoticed. Five days later, Kuze praised Alia's exam results as they walked home together. Her recent coldness puzzled him, and he asked why she was acting differently. She admitted her feelings had slipped through but appreciated his reassurance. When she finally brought up his birthday, Kuze revealed he hadn't celebrated it since elementary school. Hearing this, Alia defended Russian traditions, saying not inviting someone signified not caring about them. Kuze, moved by her words, suggested a belated celebration to show their friendship mattered. Three months late, they met in town for a casual lunch. Alia teased him about his attention to her looks, hinting at the attention she often got from others. Kuze admitted he acted possessive on dates, embarrassing her as she realized this felt like one. They arrived at a fancy restaurant, where Alia suggested strategies for the upcoming graduation ceremony. She disliked Kuze's defensive approach, but he reassured her they would do well, softening her mood. After lunch, she gifted him a matching mug, which left him flustered. Back at school, Kenzaki updated the group on new summer uniforms. Meanwhile, Maria awkwardly served tea, still uneasy about the hypnosis incident. Kuze helped her with the dishes, apologizing for the mess he had caused. Maria teased him, pinching his cheeks before leaving for the meeting. Yuki then took the chance to hug Kuze, saying she missed his attention. Their grandfather soon arrived, dressed in an eccentric outfit, and joked about proposing on Kuze's behalf. Alia's mother also teased her about marriage, leaving both embarrassed. Later, Kuze ran into Yumi, sparking childhood memories. As a child, he had worked hard to impress her, but his constant piano practice had annoyed her, leading to a hurtful moment that lingered in his mind. The memory faded as Kuzi, now sick with a cold, heard the doorbell ring. To his surprise, Alia was there with medicine, sent by Yuki. Though Kuze tried to send her away, she admitted she'd come of her own will. Nervously entering his room, Alia commented in Russian that it smelled like a boy, adding to Kuze's awkwardness. Alia asked if Kuze wanted porridge or soup, suggesting the latter since it was easier to eat when sick. When he chose soup, she mentioned it would take four hours to prepare. Kuze grumbled, settling for porridge instead. While cooking, Alia noticed him using the mug she gave him, which made her happy. Later, when Kuze's fever worsened, she served him the porridge in an apron. He joked about the nice view, and Alia sarcastically replied that he seemed fine already. After eating, Kuze explained his dad was at work, and he had no mother. He hinted for Alia to leave, but she insisted on studying in the living room in case he needed her. Waking up later, Kuze found Alia with Ayano, Yuki's maid, who was dressed in a maid uniform. Ayano offered to help him walk, but Alia snapped that Ayano was Yuki's maid, not his. Ayano nervously explained that Yuki had sent her to care for him, implying Alia could leave. Alia stayed composed, gracefully bidding farewell and asking Ayano to continue looking after him. Later Ayano served soup Alia had prepared, and Kuze complimented its taste, causing her to blush. By evening, Ayano suggested washing him while blindfolded, but Kuze firmly declined. She offered to sing him a lullaby, but was sent back to Yuki's house instead. The next morning, Kuze felt better but was surprised to find Ayano cleaning his floor. She had skipped school, saying his health took priority. After serving lunch, he noticed the medicine listed drowsiness as a side effect. Realizing Yuki had planned this, he hurried to school, overhearing boys praising Yuki over Alia. He confronted Alia, who apologized and explained what happened. The day before, Yuki gave Alia Kuze's address and medicine, asking her to care for him and join the lunch broadcast. Yuki pressured Alia into participating, even bringing up rumors about Nono to throw her off. Yuki's remarks pushed Alia to realize she couldn't afford to lose. 
Though their conversation ended on tense terms, Yuki unexpectedly apologized later, explaining her drive to become president stemmed from her late brother's legacy. Touched, but still determined, Alia promised to rise to the challenge. The next day, Nono and Tanama apologized to Alia, agreeing to support campaign after clearing misunderstandings. This gave Alia a boost of confidence as she prepared for the final presentation. Kuze assured her she was ready and shared tips to calm her nerves. Despite her doubts, she resolved to give it her best. Yuki arrived, slyly commenting on Kuze's intense focus. When Alia asked if Yuki truly wanted to remain friends, Yuki cynically said yes, calling their rivalry part of the fun. Later, the council discussed speech order, deciding on a coin toss. If Alia guessed right, she'd choose who spoke first. If not, Yuki would decide. As the coin was flipped, Yuki strategized that if she spoke first and landed a powerful blow, Alia would follow with an already shaken audience. But if she went second, the first speaker might only receive polite applause. Yuki sought a crushing victory, believing she needed to speak first. However, it might be wise to hear her brother, who was highly skilled. Yuki noticed he tried to intimidate her, which was unusual since he typically avoided attention. Regardless, the coin landed in Maria's hand, and Alia chose heads without hesitation. It came up tails, leaving Yuki to decide. She wondered if her brother's threats were genuine or just a diversion. It seemed Kuze tried to calm things down after Alia, visibly upset, was scolded. Knowing Alia's emotional fragility, he likely wanted to protect her, especially after yesterday's broadcast. Yuki concluded that the pressure on Alia would be unbearable if she spoke last, as Kuze probably aimed to go first and create a balanced outcome. With that, Yuki chose to speak first. The next day, during the closing ceremony, it was time for the student council presentations. The session began with President Kenzaki, who made remarks about the trimester and the upcoming summer break. The presidential candidates then took the stage, with Yuki as planned opening the debate. The lights dimmed, and a spotlight highlighted the podium. After confirming Ayano was ready, Yuki stepped up, greeted the audience, and reintroduced herself as a candidate for next year's student council president. Some students immediately pledged their votes for her. She then announced her first proposal. If elected, she would establish a system for considering student feedback through a suggestion box. Although Yuki had been at the school for years, few students had taken advantage of her efforts, mainly because they didn't believe any real changes would occur. This was understandable, as most council members were preoccupied with their new roles and neglected the students' needs. However, Yuki assured everyone that she would make their wishes a reality. She proposed altering sports competitions, expanding festival events, and even introducing new ones like Halloween and Christmas. Having served as student council president in middle school, Yuki felt confident in her ability to bring these ideas to life. After her speech, Kuze commented that her promises were vague, but Kenzaki praised her delivery. Maria checked on her sister, who asked to be left alone. Next, Ayano introduced herself as Yuki's running mate and personal assistant, admiring Yuki's talent and kindness. Backstage, Kuze remarked that these girls were setting the stage before Alia even had a chance to compete. However, the Russian girl remained focused, knowing it was her time to make an impression as a student council leader. As Ayano finished praising Yuki and concluded her speech, the two girls stood before the crowd to receive their well-earned applause. Next up was Alia, the student council treasurer. As she approached the podium, the crowd was still buzzing from the earlier speeches, assuming the outcome was already sealed. Suddenly, Alia surprised everyone by taking a deep breath and beginning her address in Russian. The unexpected move grabbed the audience's full attention. After a few moments, she switched back to Japanese, explaining that nerves had made her start in her native tongue, prompting a few chuckles. The day before, Kuze had advised Alia to use this tactic if she felt they were running behind. He believed that starting in Russian would reset the crowd's focus after the previous candidate's speech. Alia then launched into her real presentation, admitting that she lacked political experience since she was new to the school. While she may not yet understand all the council's duties, she assured the crowd that she was ready to work hard and tackle any challenge. 
Alia confidently declared that she always strived for excellence and believed in aiming higher after every success. Acknowledging her flaws, but assuring the crowd that she was committed to improving one step at a time. She promised to withdraw her candidacy if she felt unfit for the role, but until then, she asked everyone to observe her political actions. She finished her speech to grow in applause. Kuze congratulated her, saying it was time to win, and took the stage. He revealed that he had been pulling the strings behind the scenes when Yuki was president, striking a low-key behind-the-scenes protagonist pose that made the crowd laugh, relaxing the atmosphere. He confirmed he had been Yuki's vice president, and explained that people must be wondering why he wasn't running with her again. He added that a council president needed charisma, which is why he chose to back Alia over Yuki. To prove Alia's growing support, he announced that Taniyama and Nonoa would join the council as officers if Alia won. Former debate rivals were now working together. The two joined him on stage, shocking the crowd. The group of four thanked everyone and was met with loud applause. Kuze credited Alia for the success. Afterward, Taniyama declared that she was now even with Alia and wouldn't help the campaign anymore. Unlike Nonoa, who said she'd continue to support the new president, though she mispronounced Alia's name. Looking at her opponent, Alia resolved to become president and no longer be controlled by Yuki. Yuki admitted her loss in this round, but the fight wasn't over. Later, Kuze discovered he had ranked 33rd in his grade, failing the BET to make it into the top 30. Now he had to follow Alia's requests, spoken in Russian. Annoyed, Alia said she had wanted him to win. Flustered, Kuze asked her to use his first name, suggesting they were now seen as a team. Alia called him Kuze, leaving both of them blushing and unsure how to act as they walked out of school. Kuze mentioned prepping for the election even during the summer. Alia in Russian told him to look at her and said it would be her pleasure.